Greetings friends, Jaws Paul here. We are trying a brand new game now. This isn't a new game, I guess, but uh, it's new for the channel. We're starting our series in Tyranny. This is a, uh, I believe it's from Obsidian, um, kind of a classic RPG, um, turn-based, uh, what else? Similar to things like Baldur's Gate or Neverwinter Nights, but obviously I think this came out too years ago maybe three so we're gonna jump right in um oh my gosh expert mode i don't, I don't know how i don't know how hard this game is so I, we're just gonna go in maybe we'll do maybe we'll do expert mode <laughs> maybe i'm maybe i'm screwing myself a little bit but all right that's there's probably gonna be a cutscene here so let's listen For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world. And two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Tunan brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? It's kind of a cool premise, um, you know, we're, we're part of this, like, evil army <laughs> that's taken over. Uh, we're gonna be male, tall, skinny, short, and muscly, big and chunky. <laughs> I don't know, man. The face is really throwing me off, man, that, the face is kind of... No, I, I'm gonna go with the tall and skinny guy. That's probably it's mm, probably my speed right there. Okay, so I'm gonna do some customization, but I'm probably not gonna have you guys watch all that because well, it's, it's kind of boring. It's not what I don't know. We'll see. That hair. It's a bunch of options. Wow. I'm a huge fan of any of the uh, hairstyles. We'll go with that. Okay. Ooh, I like the beards. These are like these are like good beards, you know. Sometimes games are like it's like really disappointing. Oh, that's the one. That's it. It's gonna be kind of that. Maybe it seems like I'm just making myself here, but I'm not. I just really, really like beards. Male sneaky. Uh, I don't like. Good work. You learn something every day. I'll just hold on to this. <laughs> Got it. Quiet down. I'm injured. Tired. Let's rest. <laughs> Will do. Found something. Trouble is afoot. I guess I kind of like that on the best vibes. Nice. <laughs> Got it. Quiet down. You must rest. Soon. Yes. Found something. Go with the male aggressive. Some tattoos. Can I change the color of these? Oh, look at that. Face paint. Leg paint. Arm. Some sleeves. Hand tattoos. More face tattoos. 
What's that? On the, just on the one arm. Ooh, that'd be like, cool for an archer. I don't know what kind of a uh, character I'm going to make, to be honest. I've kind of thought about it a little bit, but <laughs> it looks really silly. That's kind of cool. kind of like that. The legs. I'm not a big leg tattoo fan, I'll, I'll be honest. I have to pick one. I guess those look kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. All right. Which of these do I pick? I guess this is kind of, you want to like know what, what you're choosing here. I kind of like the idea, I was reading a little bit, I kind of like the idea of um, doing like a, this is all female, um, doing a war mage or a battle mage, like a little bit of a, a little bit of both martial ability and, and fighting. Kind of like the best of both worlds. Oh, these guys have beards. Oh, here's a guy. That's probably our guy. Although, you know, I don't like the haircut, but whatever. We'll go with it. All right. I think I'm going to go with war mage. Yeah, so I'm kind of like, I don't even know who I am or where I came from. I don't, I don't know what became of my family and I don't want to know maybe. Oh, that sounds interesting. Let's go for it. Primary expertise will be Frost. Uh, I know I could pick two of them. I kind of like the idea... Um, weakening their attacks, vigor. Well, I think I want to go. Javelin sounds kind of interesting. You know, like everything on here is like typical until you get to javelin, and then you're like, what? Let's go javelin. Heart shot. Uh, what if we go? Okay, it's just going to change me to just be a straight up mage if I do that. That's, that does look cool. I mean, that looks cool. I, um, let's 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 go for that. Actually, I should look to see. You know what? I'm going to go for more of a mage, I think, because interrupting those shock spells. I've always kind of liked um, playing as a mage. I think I, I usually think that I'm going to want to play a, a fighter type and they're simpler, but then they're not as, they're not as interesting. Okay. Charged fist. Channel an explosive surge of electrical energy, releasing it all at once. They're nearby energy, interrupting them and sending them flying back. That sounds cool. Secondary expertise. Ooh, secondary. Maybe secondary should be javelin then. Spear and shield. Oh, interesting. War mace. Okay, so before we had before we had two weapon two handed weapon fighting, I think, and this was sword and shield, but now it's spear. Or maybe I don't know. I do not know. I don't understand what's going on. But anyway, okay. We're going to go with Javelin. Yeah, 
let's go let's go for something fun let's go for war mace as my secondary why not let's go sunder I I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm totally messing this up. I think this is all. This part's all cosmetic. Should make this red. No, it needs to stand out more. There we go. Okay. Enter name. Actually, you know what? I typically, go for that as my character name. So we're gonna stick with that. And I'll move, I'll either, I'm not sure about having the, the camera um, or my face on this. I'll, I'll probably get rid of it if it seems to be blocking important stuff. Quickness sounds good. Spell strength. Okay, duration of afflictions. Six percent ability cooldowns. Okay, accuracy of attacks and spells. Might. Okay, I don't. I know I don't want. Might I don't need that much might. Let's let's put one in finesse. Will defense. I'm guessing that's like spell defense. Maybe we'll go one more in quickness. I don't know, man. Quickness just seems good. Less you know, cool down. Cool down's good. Control lightning. Draw and control spells that use the sigil of lightning. Higher skill values increase the chance of hits and crits. Magic staff. Lore determines character's ability to decipher information, put together clues from fragments of information. Um, I'll go with a bit more lore. Dodge. Okay, more control lightning, magic staff. Let's, let's be pretty good at that. That seems important too. Okay. Quick start or conquest. Let's go with conquest. I don't know, why not? All the world has fallen to Kairos, and now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. Two armies that is favored in the Scarlet Chorus march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. Sorry about that. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the Conquerors. Until it's too late. During the conquest, you'll decide your character's actions during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Oh, wow. Each choice, each choice you make affects your character and how, my, how major factions of the Tears respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. Okay. Bastard city stood on the northern border between Kairos's empire and the Tears. Built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms, the city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center of all wealth. 
To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' army. Okay. Taking the city would send a message to the rest of the tiers. Kairos' will is insurmountable. Okay. Infiltrate the tears. History would remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with the advanced units of both armies preparing for the coming war. The Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? Um, let's see. Scarlet Chorus is little more than a gang of thugs and their captives slaves rather than organized under com commissioned officers. The Chorus follows a hierarchy seemingly ruled by whoever has the bravado to command and defend their position. As the head of this chaotic pe pecking order, the Archon of Secrets, better known as the Voices of Narat, treats the secret Scarlet Chorus as something. <laughs> uh, treats Scarlet Chorus as his personal army. The Scarlet Cor Chorus often suffers tremendous losses after battle, but only to swell in the aftermath when the captured enemies and collateral prisoners are given the cruel opportunity to join or die. That's okay, kind of interesting. Grave and Ash, whom they follow with obsessed devotion, they are committed to imposing their interpretation of order upon the relative lawlessness of the tears. The Legion only tolerates Northerners in their ranks, priding themselves on their high standards and cultural purity. Uh, okay, we're going to go with the disfavored. You lend your skills to the elite disfavored scouts to capture a border garrison. Graven Ash insists that an, an early victory in the offensive would boost the morale of his troops and diminish the haughty overconfidence of the southerners. The Oathbound Scouts identified a modest border defense and collaborated on an organized attack that would leave the enemy uncoordinated and cut off from aid. You oversaw the preparations and offered your opinion on the strategy when the clashing of swords and spears fell to silence, followed by cheering of disfavored scouts. You were the least surprised. Okay, so that's kind of like interesting. Your fiercest opponent in the Bastard City were the mages of the schools of the school of wild wrath, too barbaric to use their power responsibly. The unbridled practitioners needed to be stopped. How did you trick the hot tempered mages into their own undoing? Lured the hot headed mages to an ambush where a legion of disfavored waited to spring the trap. The soldiers were hungry for a chance to subdue the arcane branch of tears resistance. You tricked the guild elders into meeting with the voices of Narat, Archon of Secrets. The Archon was notorious for his cruel and mysterious interrogation techniques. The mages were never seen again. <laughs> uh, okay, so if I do the inside agent one, you enlisted a bitter captain of the guard to sell military secrets to the disfavored better that Kairos's forces march to their next inevitable victory well informed. You came to an arrangement with a well-connected smuggler who knew how to sneak agents of the Scarlet Chorus behind the city walls. The Scarlet Chorus were better operatives than soldiers, and this work required a subtle touch. Well, we're going to go here. I think we're going to go with this. Um, yeah, lured the hot-headed mages into an ambush. The mages took their more dangerous research outside of the bastard city walls. You sent a scout to sabotage a delicate ritual which caused an explosion that injured or killed many senior practitioners. Enraged, the survivors expended themselves on a chase through the surrounding hills where the disfavored surrounded them and brought them to heal. The few that survived the attack were conscripted by the Scarlet Chorus. Betrayal of the Bastard City. Your tactics of infiltration placed you in the Bastard City ahead of the main armies. Your work softened the city defenses for its arrival 
for the arrival of Kairos' forces, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the bastard city? Keeping to the shadows, you eliminate the leaders of the bastard cities one by one. Ooh, concealing shadows. Okay, this gives me abilities. Um, spreading the words, the word of Kairos, you converted the poor and disaffected into the hidden army of the Scarlet Chorus. Once the dust settled, the army wished to bolster their troops with these sleeper cells. Searing palm. Gather heated energy into your hands and release it into a foe. The target ignites in flames, burning over time. Okay. You challenge the commander of the Bastard City's defenses to an honorable fight to the death. The disfavored wish to spare the soldiers' lives for the battles ahead and civilian lives for occupation. Warrior's respite plus 50% or negative 50% damage. Oh, wow. Oh, only one per encounter. I see. We go for this one. Convert the poor and disaffected. Didn't take much to convince the Bastard Cities downtrodden that Kairos was a superior power. You armed them with weapons and knowledge of a, s of a signal you would raise when the time was right. As the armies appeared outside the walls, you ignited the spark that fanned their anger into a full-scale riot. The chaos they spread in Kairos' name weakened the city to such an extent that its inevitable fall was but a formality. Hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. Bastard City settled into a new state of normalcy with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The army is divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunan sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' conquest, either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethian's Crossing, or as a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Hmm. Let's go war advisor. I'm not going to read all this. I don't really don't know what I'm doing, but that's all right. Year two of Kairos's conquest. The mountain nation of Apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian, stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunon assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to their territory, as well as keeping an eye on both armies. All right, battle for Eldering Pass. The disfavored sent their most destructive ally to crush Edgering Fort Cairn. Archon of Stone buried the stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding mountains. The Scarlet Chorus were promised captured enemies for recruit, recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. The, the chorus demanded compensation, congratulated the disfavored for taking the pass without risking the lives of Kairos' loyal servants. At this stage of the campaign, it was vital to use any advantage that would mitigate ally losses. You upheld the Scarlet Chorus's claim, demanded the youngest disfavored scouts join the chorus to set it up. Oof, no way. Uh, denial of strength. A school of water mages loyal to the Tearsmen posed a substantial threat. The disfavored wished to annihilate the school while the Scarlet Chorus insisted on capturing the mages wishing to learn of their craft. You sided with the disfavored. All mages had a chance to surrender before the war and trying to capture the enemy would lead to needless losses. Uh, interesting. None of these are great but I'll go with the disfavored on this one and slaughter the mages, I guess. Or should I? No, let's go with this. The avalanche one. <laughs> I don't know. The Scarlet Chorus claims 
were insignificant compared to the lossless victory. You congratulated the disfavored and encouraged the Scarlet Chorus to better value their soldiers' lives, a suggestion that gang bosses took worse than the original offense, vowing to remember this the slight, the slighted army returned to camp to sulk, if not lick their wounds. Okay, so I'm kind of uh, getting on the Scarlet Chorus's bad side, it seems like. Okay. Marriage bed armistice. The enemy readied for a peacetime festival as Kairos' forces armed for battle. The disfavored paid no mind to the southern custom and planned to attack the Vendrian forces during their annual celebration. The Scarlet Chorus insisted on a day of nonviolence. As former tearsmen, many would grasp the decency of temporary reprieve. Swords of the Fallen. Scarlet Chorus soldiers were seen wearing disfavored gear supposedly taken from those who fell in battle. The disfavored were outraged, citing tradition that their armor passed only to next of kin within their army. In a debate of tradition versus practicality, you had to rule in favor of one army over another. Good heavens. You upheld the disfavored traditions and punished those wearing the legion's iron. The army uh, had come to deliver Kairos's peace, which came with higher standard. You denied the disfavored's complaint as the demands of war rendered such vain customs irrelevant lacking in suitable armor the scarlet chorus would retain what they had collected Oof, none of these are good um oh my gosh <laughs> let's go with the scarlet chorus on this one you know let them have their day festivities went off as expected and the scarlet chorus re recruits you sent to enjoy themselves reported Little animosity among the revelers, the disfavored protested your ruling as too merciful and waged all night training drills to combat the sound of celebration with an anthem of swords and shields. <laughs> you sent forces to attack the following day, a battle from which disfavored recused themselves out of protest. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Jerks. The fall of Apex. With the defeat of Apex and inevitability, the armies of Kairos met to discuss how to put an end to this stage of the conquest. Both armies agreed to send an offer of parley. Along with their acceptance, the enemy requested that you appear at the meeting. Word of your fair dealings had apparently spread to their ranks. How did you orchestrate the surrender of the realm of Apex? Okay. Through days of mediation, you negotiated the surrender of the Valley of Kairos to Kairos' forces, putting an end to further bloodshed. Taunting the Queen of Apex into striking you under a banner of truce, you baited the Queen of Apex into a duel and slew her, frightening her vassals into submission. Uh, oh man, they're both so interesting. So I negotiated or fighting. Let's go fighting. Scarlet Course urged you to show the Overlord's strength by any means necessary. During peace talks, a well-placed insult goaded the Queen of Apex into striking you. You responded to the slight by challenging her to a duel. Through, uh, though the Queen was skilled in battle, your fierce experience outmatched her court training. As her body lay cooling on the ground, you demanded that her followers kneel before the Overlord's banner. Unable to rise above the fear of the moment, the remaining leaders capitulated, surrendering the valley to Kairos' forces. Wow. Okay. Okay, the land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kairos' forces. The Scarlet Garlic Chorus paused to reveal... Uh, revel in victory while the disfavored prepared for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos's armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos's military left the choice of your next, de next destination yours to decide. Okay. Vellum Citadel. Stalwart or Azure. I have no idea what any of these are. Okay, Stalwart with its easy, easy, easily defended position and rich military tradition. The realm of Stalwart was the most formidable realm in the tiers. Azure, Kairos uh, dispatched the Archon of Stone to subjugate the nation of Azure. 
Vellum Citadel, Kairos's conquering gaze fell upon the Vellum Citadel, its treasuries, its knowledge, its secrets. Let's go for Stalwart. Year three of Kairos's conquest. The realm of Stalwart has best was best known for its proud army. Disciplined, courageous, and undefeated on their home soil, skill and resolve made Stalwart a mighty a military power that Kairos's forces approached with due caution. With its southern position, Stalwart had been largely safe from war, watching for two years as its neighbors fell to Kairos's forces. On the dawn of the third year of the war, Kairos's forces were finally poised to invade the Stalwart Peninsula and subdue the Tyr's most vaunted army. Contentious setback. After a defeat at the hands of enemy defenders, the Scarlet Chorus accused the disfavored of recklessness. The disfavored claimed the Scarlet Chorus brought too few soldiers to cover their flanks. Both armies refused to march until you gave a ruling. Um, knowing the disfavored reputation for discipline as well as Scarlet Chorus's powers to instill a fear and frenzy, you decided that the Scarlet Chorus was in the wrong. Lacking proof that the Scarlet Chorus recruits were negligent, you punished the disfavored commander for his failure and for bringing charges without evidence. Marching on empty, the stalwart defenders burned their crops as they retreated, leaving the invaders little to forage, starving. The, cor the Scarlet Chorus mob raided from the disfavored's well-maintained supply lines, incurring casualties on both sides. Oh my gosh. You ordered that the thieving Scarlet Corps soldiers be spiked for their affront. By your command, the disfavored shared their provisions. The thieves each lost a hand for their treachery. How interesting. I feel like this is the practical one, right? You, you've got to share your provisions, you know? We're in a war. Let's go for that. The Scarlet Chorus commanders argued that the Horde was starving, being the largest force, largest of Kairos' armies. They were also the least provisioned. The men were wrong to steal, but the disfavored were equally wrong to withhold supplies from their allies. You agreed with the chorus version of events and ordered that the disfavored supplies be shared. The thieves themselves would be punished with loss of hand and return to the front lines. The disfavored found this a sickening aberration of justice and surrendered their supplies with grudging acceptance. Hmm. Rather than submit to Scarlet Chorus conscription, conquered locals began committing suicide. Desperate to add more bodies to the horde, the Scarlet Chorus demanded a portion of disfavored prisoners. The disfavored denied the right of recruitment as the realm's population had taken a steep decline. You banned the Scarlet Chorus from recruiting in the realm of Stalwart, going so far as to notify the locals to assuage their feel fears. Uh, you refused the disfavored request and allowed the Scarlet Corps to continue recruitment. Additionally, you ordered that disfavored camp slaves be given to the chorus to make up for the losses suffered. Camp slaves. Oh my goodness. Scarlet Chorus mages discovered a spell to turn beastmen slaves against their handlers. The army prepared to deploy this tactic elsewhere, but the disfavored protested. The use of unsanctioned magical practi practices ran contrary to Kairos' law, and the beastmen were considered too erratic to be relied upon, even as shock troops. Agree with the disfavored argument and order the beastmen slain. The Scarlet Chorus mages who discovered the trick were ordered to never use it again on pain of execution. You approve of the Scarlet Chorus's new innovation and rule the technique and acceptable use of wartime magic. Hmm. Hmm. 
Uh, let's go with the Scarlet Chorus on this one. I like those options better. This favor just lambasted you for authorizing such a risky tactic. Kairos' armies also relied on beastmen and haulers, and the disfavored argued such magic would in inevitably unravel supply lines and logistics. The chorus, on the other hand, were emboldened by the decree and considered you an honorable patron of arcane inquiry. Though the Scarlet Chorus struggled to maintain a presence in stalwart, this magic for enraging beastmen slaves was used to bloody effect through the, throughout the countryside. Okay. Edict of Storms. The disfavored carved a slow, steady path into the heart of Stalwart and surrounded the enemy's massive fortress. With the main bulk of their forces defeated, the enemy leadership retreated to their mighty fortress, content to wait out the war. The Overlord answered this impudence with an Edict of Storms on the peninsula, peninsula a devastating spell that would endure for as long as the cowardly hearts of Stalwart leaders persisted in beating. Knowing before anyone else that the edict would what the edict would incur, the voices of Narat lobbied for you to deliver the mighty incantation. Aside from being given a three day window to read the edict, you received no other instructions. Greeting with the wishes of the disfavored, you proclaim the edict at once, leaving the enemy no time to react. Stalwart had had ample opportunity to surrender for several years. The time for mercy was long gone. In an attempt to ingratiate themselves with the people of Stalwart, the Scarl Scarlet Chorus insisted that warning be sent to the towns and villages so that people may prepare for the horror about to descend upon them. Oh, man. Common people. You know, Scarlet Chorus is kind of like, they're for the common people on this one. Ingratiate. I don't know. I think I gotta go with the disfavored on this one. You agree with the disfavored rationale? The leaders of Stalwart had refused honorable battle, and too many disfavored lives were lost in the campaign. Since the last regent refused to leave the keep, you would let him watch as his people suffered. Without hesitation or regret, you broke the seal of Kairos' Edict of Storms and read the Overlord's incantation. Holy smolies. So the people of Stalwart are really not going to like me very much. The clear skies darkened as you read the final words of the edict. A flurry of wind and rain whipped through the rolling plains and craggy ca canyons, turning rocks, uprooted trees, and hapless soldiers into hazardous shrapnel. Armed with, measure, with a measure of foresight, you were able to remove yourself from the area before the storms grew more violent over time. Nearby communities told of cyclones consisting of thousands of soldiers worth of limbs, spears, armor, and skulls. What's more, the weather showed no signs of dissipating. Several units of disfavored who fought the enemy in spite of the advancing storm were caught up in the overlord's magic. The few survivors regrouped and nursed their wounds. Their failure to topple the st stalwart legion shamed them into believing the dead more fortunate. The name stalwart fell from use. People took to calling it the blade grave for the, for the remade landscape festooned with the iron and bronze armaments of two once great legions. As Kairos' forces departed, you spared a glance back at the ruins of Stalwart, marveling at your work. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. Oof. That wasn't the kindest thing I've ever done, but, you know. Conquest complete. Okay. <laughs> I think we gotta just go with what we, well, with what we did. I mean... I'm not sure. I tried to like balance between the Scarlet Chorus and uh, and uh, the Disfavored. The year is 431, and Kairos's invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers: the Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising. 
murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus Garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance, but months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict in any way that you can. <laughs> 